Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by John Kurtz with KMAN in Manhattan, Kansas, one of the co-hosts of the game. But John, I don't want to bury the lead here because I want to talk about you and your YouTube channel. It is flat out blowing up. You have had a lot of coverage of conference realignment in the Big 12, uh, specifically what could be happening to some of the remaining eight teams uh, after Oklahoma and Texas uh, have taken their talents to the Southeastern Conference. But, man, talk about what's happening at your channel. I mean, it's it's uh, it's got to be a ride right now. It does. Well, thanks for having me, Joey. I appreciate it. it it's been really crazy to see. I mean, I didn't really expect it. I you know, it was a K-State channel before um, three weeks ago, and um, I, I posted one video, I think, right after it was the day that it happened, that Wednesday, that, that everything went down and the report came out from the Houston Chronicle. And I saw the numbers spike. I mean, it went crazy. It was maybe 10,000 or something, which I had never seen numbers like that. And it just kind of clicked. I was like, all right, well, obviously there's going to be something here, and it's it's not going away anytime soon. And I think the good thing for me on that front is it's it's not something that's going to happen or be totally resolved overnight. So there's probably going to be a lot of this um, continuing to wind and wind as things go on now moving forward. But it's been awesome. I mean, I'm, I've covered the Big 12 for 10 years now uh, covering K-State. But look, I've been on the road with them everywhere in the Big 12 many times. So I feel like I've been around the block. This is kind of my area of expertise. And it's, it's all coalescing together right now with, I mean, I, frankly, I just feel like the the Big 12, the eight teams remaining here really need a voice and really need as many strong voices as they can get right now because on a national level, you're not seeing a whole lot of that. So that's really what I try and focus on and, and emphasize the most um, on the YouTube channel. So yeah, if you're if you're new to it, would definitely appreciate the subscription and uh, I think you'll you'll enjoy what you see over there. Well, I will tell you that uh, in our house, we're not new to it. We were already subscribed. We've been following you for a little while, but I think that that's that's relevant uh, for folks who are fans of the Big 12 and and maybe a little bit older, like someone like me. I'm not saying I'm old. I don't think 50 is old, but I'm trying to make it look good. However, I do fondly remember the Big Eight, and so hearing someone like you talk about that that, that seems to express the the same kind of a fondness for that. It it is. It's important. It's nice to have a voice uh, for the fans that are out there too. So. I appreciate that. Well, let's go ahead and, and do. Let's start at the beginning then, just for uh, a moment. I know everyone is up to speed, but Oklahoma and Texas headed to the Southeastern Conference. You said as uh, word came out about that, you jumped on it. Yeah, I mean it, it was crazy. I still remember. It's it's going to be one of those moments. I think that I'll remember for a long time where I was when I first saw the news. I was pulling in. It was like three fifteen. My show goes live at four o'clock. Pulling in, <laughs> have a whole show ready to go, and I look at a text that I had just from a just from a texting group, not even that I hear from all that often, an old college friend of mine who sent a tweet and was like, you know, oh, freaking Texas. And I was like, what is this? And like, look down and I was like, man, it just hits you, the gravity of that, where you're like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I mean, that's a massive story if if that's actually true. And obviously everything just took off from then. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 incredibly frustrating if you're one of the teams, if you're a fan of one of the teams that's left here, I mean, you just look at the situation and like with Oklahoma, I feel not quite the same as I do toward Texas. I think most of the anger is directed toward Texas here because of how they've bullied around the conference for so long. And now are leaving with this attitude of like, well, this league isn't good enough anymore. When, I mean, part of the reason that it's not is because teams left because of Texas in the first place. And Texas just has the aura obviously of, of an unearned arrogance. They've been a seven and five program for the last 10 years in college football and now think that they're they're good enough to leave and go to the SEC. Whereas with Oklahoma, I think you do have to kind of throw up your hands and say, look, they've won this thing six years in a row. They've won it 14 out of 25 times that there's been a champion crowned in the league. They've been the only thing pulling the league along into the playoff, obviously being there four times. Like yeah. if they want to leave, uh, they, they have certainly earned the right. I think Oklahoma has. Now there are a lot of issues with leaving Oklahoma state behind. And I understand some of that, but yeah, it just it, it is not a good situation. And I think the the other part of it, too, is that you sit around if you're a K-State, Oklahoma State, Iowa State fan, and you look and you say, like, 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 why is South Carolina in a better position than we are? Why is Boston College in a better position than we are locked up in the ACC through 2036 with their grant of rights? I mean, it's just crazy how it's all worked out, but it's, it's all really geography-based, and I call it kind of the birth lottery principle. I mean, just by yeah. virtue of where you were born, things are, are so much different. So – um, that again comes back to why I think it's so important for the, the remaining eight schools here to have a voice. 
We're speaking now with John Kurtz here on Midwest Sportsnet. And, and you know, I ordinarily I, I would be giving a shout out. Hey, listen, subscribe to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more here on this channel. I want to push you towards John's channel as well, especially now because he has some great content. Uh, John, you are a play-by-play voice for the Kansas State women's basketball team, for soccer, for volleyball as well, and, and uh, are a part of the pregame coverage for football men's basketball and as such you have a vested interest in this i mean this is this is beyond just something about being a fan i mean it's it's important to you yeah i mean and I, I think that's that's a huge part of it for everybody right even if you're even if you're just a fan obviously there's the business interest part of it for me too i mean business is better when k-state is doing better and has a, ma- a seat at the table in a major conference doing a radio show doing a daily radio show doing a pregame show obviously yeah being involved with with uh, some of the non-revenue sports as well. Um, it's it's really disheartening to think about what could happen to some of that on down the line. And even beyond that, just the, you know, I've lived in Manhattan now for, uh, well, I started college in 2007, so a long time. So a lot of relationships here. You think about all the businesses, the local economy that thrives off of K-State football. That's already hurting a bit, by the way, because of COVID last year. I mean, those are the kind of things that get really, really tough to, to think about the impact of what that could have on down the line, depending on how how things work out. And I don't want to get too negative on that front, but um, no. that that stuff is a reality, unfortunately, that you have to deal with right now. And I think for anybody else, I mean, even beyond that for me and where I can relate to everybody else on that is just being a fan. I mean, like this is what we based our lives around, right? I mean, I started going to K-State football games um, in the very early 90s, right after Bill Snyder started when, you know, I was two or three years old coming with my dad and went every weekend um, growing up. I mean, it's literally how I've like marked the time in my life is remembering what, what was happening in the, in the K-State football season that year. So I know everybody has just deeply embedded traditions. It's such a, a part of the fabric of our lives around here. And that's, that's a really difficult thing to grapple with losing, or at least losing it being the same as it once was, uh, you know, not having the opportunity to have it feel as big time as it did there for a while. And you know, for a K-State fan base, you're talking about a fan base that experienced at one point winning 11 games in six of seven years under Bill Snyder. So mm-hmm. proven that they can win at the highest level, even in the last decade, they've won a Big 12 championship. They've been ranked number one. Um, there have been some pretty high highs. Uh, as recently as 2014, they were playing on the last day of the regular season with a chance at a Big 12 championship at Baylor. So um, it, it's a tough pill to swallow to think about what all that could turn into. Well, I have followed your your commentary on this now for the last two or three weeks, and and uh, I'm following along. So I, I know what you have out there. I want to tell people, look, whatever your team is, John has something to say about that if it's in the Big 12, Oklahoma, Texas, and the term I rate eight, which I, I learned from you. Uh, so anyway, that, that I think it, it is there. <laughs> I think it's appropriate. I'll, we'll pick one of the teams then. Uh, I'll, I'll pick o- Oklahoma State because I'm an alum. And uh, I'll go ahead and pick that. So where do you see Oklahoma State? Uh, what are their possibilities? What are their options? Yeah, I think they have some options. Um, at least I think that would be a strong possibility to the Pac-12 if something were to materialize there. And I you know, I have to stress, I think we talk about a lot of these scenarios, I think, and I've done videos on this, that really all eight teams are in pretty similar boats because I don't think there's a compelling argument for any one of the eight teams to say, we will add to your bottom line. We, we will make every school in your league money. I, I think it's a really tough sell for anybody right now, which means that unless some other dominoes start to fall first, you're unlikely to see anything happen very quickly. But at least we know that Bob Bowlesby, you know, he met for six hours with the Pac-12 commissioner last week. So there's at least been a, a first date of sorts going on there. And if, if something were to happen, I think Oklahoma State would be in a pretty strong position there. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a strong football brand. Mike Gundy's built up a, a heck of an identity there. Just looking at it yesterday, I think it's eight, nine plus win seasons that he's had uh, since he's been at Oklahoma State. And one thing that works in Oklahoma State's favor is Stuart Mandel from The Athletic laid out the the TV numbers in a piece that was really focused on how overall the eight teams left in the Big 12 do not rate much better than the teams in the American Athletic Conference right now. So it was not a positive article, but it was positive for Oklahoma State in the respect that breaking it down team by team they did better than everybody else in the remaining eight. So if if there is a team that has a better argument for, hey, we can actually bring some juice uh, on TV, it's Oklahoma State. So I I would say that's that's a definite positive there. And I also think it helps that they're closer to the state of Texas. So Texas Tech seems to be like the real linchpin here out to the Pac-12 because if you're going to get in the central time zone, you'd want to get in the state of Texas. Tech is the biggest school left by far 
in the Big 12 in the state of Texas, both in terms of enrollment and, and then the market size. I guess TCU, Dallas, Fort Worth, but Lubbock is still um, a much bigger place, certainly, than Waco. So they become pretty attractive. And if they're looking for a dancing partner out to the Pac-12, I think Oklahoma State's the natural one there because they're closer, being close to the state of Texas, and you're just trying to help out the Pac-12, get as many recruiting ties into that state as you can. So I think there are some advantages there for Oklahoma State. But, again, the problem overall is – I don't know that they have enough to say, hey, we could go move somewhere on our own because we are just that valuable to anybody that takes us. That's that's just the unfortunate reality. I have heard the clip from the Texas legislature a number of times <laughs> on on your videos. And I think it is hilarious. And it is interesting then to see, you know, some of the takes from from different regions within different states as well and how they see this all playing out. You, of course, in the state of Kansas and and being someone with ties to Kansas State, you're going to see things a little bit different than the folks who are cheering for the Jayhawks right now. And I've heard that expressed as well. So what's next for Kansas State and how does that match up? Yeah, I think around here the you know, last week it got pretty hot and heavy because there was the the rumor floated out there that Kansas to the Big Ten was imminent, which I always thought was was pretty silly, even though I think there's a non-zero chance that Kansas can get into the Big Ten at some point because of their AAU status and the basketball program. But right now, I mean, look, again, Mandel's broken down the numbers, and it just basically, long story short, you can get to $25 million being the top maximum value for, for what basketball in the Big 12 as a whole would be, and you can give Kansas credit for most of that, but that's only half the payout for a Big Ten team right now. So if you added them, you're going to be splitting the pie more ways and not bringing in enough money to keep the money the same for everybody. So I still think it would take some major dominoes falling first and the big 10 is going to shoot its shot toward USC and some bigger fish before they would come back around to, uh, to Kansas. So Kansas probably has more options. I mean, the ACC I'm sure would at least be something that uh, could, they could have a conversation. And I think basketball really helps as far as that goes. And, and even the PAC 12, I mean, maybe Kansas is, is going to be involved there too. Although right now it seems like everything from their end is focused on the big 10. So they have more options than K-State does, to be completely honest. I think what K-State has to sell, you obviously have a rabid fan base that will turn up if the team is winning. Um, facilities have improved a lot in the last 10 years. John Curry, who was the previous athletic director, did a ton of work as far as that goes. They poured $200 million into football facilities here in the last decade, um, which helps them stay competitive. And it was all with an eye on the next round of, of conference realignment. So hopefully, you know, that does uh, turn around to help out. And Football, the problem with football, I mean, look, they've been the third winningest team in the Big 12 in the last 10 years, but the issue is they just don't have much of an exciting brand. I mean, Bill Snyder was never interested in building any kind of an exciting brand, and it was pretty bland. And even now, I mean, Chris Kleiman's done a lot, I think, to try to help that out, but they're not playing the most exciting brand of football in the world. So I just – that, that I think, is the issue. A lot of people just look at K-State yeah. as fairly boring. Um, but there has been some conversation about – can K-State, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech work together behind the scenes to get out to the Pac-12 if there's going to be a life raft there? Uh, so it's not like they've been totally out of all of the conversations. And I do think that they are a half step above TCU and Baylor, at least if you're talking about going to the Pac-12, just because the the cultural differences there with two religious schools, I think is a yeah. – you talk to people behind the scenes, it's a negative with the, the Pac-12 leadership. So they're, they're probably not K-State in the worst position of anybody in the Big 12, but – um, they also don't exactly have a ton of options right now and are really internally just preaching Big 12 solidarity and very much so trying to, to hope that that winds up working out. All right, John. Well, I will ask you one other thing, too. And I, by the way, I find it interesting because of the, the different takes that you can have on all of this. I mean, you mentioned the Big Ten and the possibility of USC. That goes beyond geography. The other side of it is it geography makes a difference for possibly uh, West Virginia, maybe to the ACC. So, I mean, you know, there's so many different factors that go in both directions. I, there's Realistically, it looks like nothing's off the table at this point in time other than money, and that has to be uh, a big factor all the way around. Well, then just to, to give you this opportunity, wh what do you think is the next domino that will fall in any direction? Is it Texas Tech or, or uh, is it something else that, that we're just not seeing yet? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one to answer because I think to, to kind of piggyback off what you were saying there, like the the one rule of conference realignment is there are no rules. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, who knows where exactly we're going? And, you know, I talked to my buddy Ryan Hyatt last week who, who covers Texas Tech and he does a great job. And his his feeling and thought was, look, like the SEC right now just made a big time power move. The Big Ten is going to need to move 
quickly to try and and keep up basically and and the Pac-12 may need to move quickly to try and keep themselves from being poached by the Big 10. So his feeling was there could be a domino falling quicker than we think out there in one of those two leagues. I still think it feels pretty far off um, because remember, I mean, it took six months behind the scenes of Texas and Oklahoma working to get everything ready to go to the SEC. And and honestly, I think it probably would have still been going right now if not for Texas A&M finding out about it and getting upset and leaking the report. I think that just expedited everything. So I, I think these things will take time. If you really put a gun to my head and said, hey, you're going to have to make a guess here, I would think the Big Ten does something. I would think the Big Ten is able to – whether it's a scheduling alliance or just tightening up their agreement with the Pac-12 or it's actually poaching um, USC, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, which has been the rumored four there, I, I would lean that way. But again, I, I just I hate doing it. And that's that's kind of one of the things about conference realignment that I cringe at and didn't like at first was thinking like <laughs> it's like everybody. It's like fantasy football. Everybody wants to tell you about their fantasy football team. Everybody wants yeah. to tell you about, hey, here's here's what I think makes sense for the uh, Pac-12, Big 12, whatever it might be. Um, so I think you can just get yourself into trouble trying to do too much of that. But yeah, gun to my head, it feels like the Big 10 has to make some kind of move to answer what the SEC did here so that they don't fall too far behind financially. Well, John, I don't want you to get in trouble. I'd, I'd love for you to come back and visit with us again. So I don't want you to get in too much trouble. However, I would say that your information has been enjoyable to consume. I appreciate that. I mean, you, you're bringing in a uh, a lot of information that I think is important to a lot of folks uh, like me who are fans of Oklahoma State and fans of the Big 12 and even go back again to the Big 8. You know, I had an opportunity to be in the final Big 8 tournament. I was in the in the building for the final Big okay. 8 basketball tournament way back when, back in the 90s when my wife was pregnant with our first child. We've had five, so it's it's been a while. Uh, that having been said, though, I mean, these things are important to us, and you've got a lot of information, so I want to encourage everyone, please do stop by John's channel and find out a little bit more about what's going on. John Kurtz, John, anything that, uh, any, any other way they can get in touch with what you have to offer? Yeah, absolutely. So there, there are a bunch of ways. Um, you can, obviously, the, the YouTube channel is just my name, John Kurtz. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's JL Kurtz, J-L-K-U-R-T-Z. Um, I'm on it a lot too much, honestly. So you'll, you'll see plenty there. Um, you can also listen to my daily radio show. The, the easiest way there, I'm live from four to six in, in Manhattan, but the easiest way there is just wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, just search for the game K M A N, uh, and you'll find that there. And, uh, I also, I do another podcast called lock it up with, uh, lock it up with Kurtz, which is with Aaron Lockett, who is uh, an Oklahoma native who used to play at K state. Mm -hmm. He's title Lockett's uncle. Um, and that just got fired up here within the last couple of weeks. So you can find that also wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube. Um, that's going to be K-State specific content, obviously. So lots of ways to uh, to get in touch or to hear from me. And yeah, I love responding, love hearing from you. Slide in the DMs on Twitter if you have anything and uh, we can start a conversation. All right, John, thanks for being with us here on the summit today. We appreciate it. God bless you, man. Absolutely. Thank you, Joey.